Hi, John Toronto here. It's been two years. I've been making a lot of uh, barrel knot rosary bracelets and I've tweaked my techniques. I'd like to share them with you, so stay tuned. Hi, so this will be an update to my original video that I did with Joe, and if you want to see that one, click right here. I'm going to share a few techniques that will help you make a better bracelet. You know, we kind of did this just before the COVID lockdown, and uh, not only did I make a lot of rosaries, I said a lot of rosaries. So stay tuned and watch some of the new techniques. One of the first tips I wanna give you is on spacing. You can see that the bracelet, before I size it to the person who's going to wear it, the knots are very tight. This is the one I've been wearing for the past few years, and you can see how the distance between the knots, it's almost more than doubled. So I slide it on, I hold the cross, and the break knot, the middle is the slip knot, and I size it to fit. And I take it on and off all the time because I'm always saying a rosary. So the first tip is about spacing. Here's the break knot. That's that very first knot that you start with. And I'm going to show you the second tip is a um, no longer a straw. I'm using a drink stirrer. And when I go out for an adult beverage, I always take my stirrer with me. And um, I'm going to show you that you don't want to have any space, three, four, five, six, seven, the side you ended up, I'm going to feed the other end through. It is a little harder getting it in. Sometimes when you're burning it, you have to bring it to a point Remember, you don't want anything in that loop. That end knot will try to get in that loop. Push it through. And here, I have it right up against that break knot. And this is the first knot of the rosary, the first rosary knot. And I'm going to pull it. And you can see that the drink stirrer makes a tighter knot. You don't have to work so hard keeping it in place and getting it in place. And you only really need about, you know, less than two fingers wide because the knots will stretch out. So the next tip I wanna share with you is making the cross. Um, when you make the head of the cross, you use five loops, three, four, five. And last time I said leave about an inch, you don't wanna leave an inch because the knots do give once you size it to the person who will be wearing it. And um, so this is, go this is right up against that, the 10th knot for the 10th Hail Mary in the rosary. I'm gonna stretch it out and you basically only need enough room to fit the slip knot. Now when I'm doing the body of the cross, I'm going to do eight loops, four, five, six, seven, eight. And here, I'm, again, I'm coming in from the side I ended up with. And again, the head of the cross is inside the body of the cross. And I don't wanna get anything caught in that loop. So making that jump over the old knot is the tricky part. And there's that big hairdo, that big Mar Marge Simpson hairdo. And here, I don't want any space. So it's, again, you've got to pull a little, push a little. Pull a little, push a little. Pull a little, push a little. And you just want enough room for a piece of string for the arms of the cross. So... I'll, I'll get ready for the arms of the cross and share that next. 
So the last time I said you needed a good eight inches to make the, um, the arms of the cross, and a lot of people have been leaving comments and very nice comments, so thank you. But I, I just want to say start with, now this piece of paper I'm on is, is um, I think that's 24 inches long. So go long with the arms of the cross. You're going to start with a regular knot. I guess I call that a square knot. And I have it between the head and the body of the cross. And now I'm going to pull it tight. And again, you could pull it tight with little pliers. My sister gave me a set. But be careful, don't pull too hard with these because you could actually rip the string. So now that arm piece is set and it's long. It's easier to make the arms with a longer piece of um, string. You could make it with the eight inch piece, but it's challenging, okay? So here comes the, uh, the first arm of the cross. I have the stirrer perpendicular to the body and the head, and I'm going to loop around four times. I'm going to feed the end from the side I ended up with. I don't want anything to get caught in this loop. And now, remember, it's a spiral, so when you pull, you might want to pull and twist. And then my sister gave me uh, this other tool. I don't know what you call it, but it's um, it has like little dents in it, some type of a crimper. And I can grab the string without cutting it, grab one of the little pliers, because it does do a number on your fingernails. And I'm pulling it to get it really tight against the head and the body of the cross. And I'm going to repeat on the other side, and then I'll show you how you seal it up again and make the slip knot. The cross is completed, the arms are on. I'm just going to show you how to trim it off. About a quarter inch from the knot, I trim it. I seal the knot and round it off. Do that one more time on this side. And remember, you can burn yourself. Sometimes if you wet your finger, um, it'll minimize any type of burning. So the cross is complete. And now I will demonstrate how to make the slip knot one more time. So another tip you need to know is to make the ends of the string pointy so they'll go through the stir. Okay, so I have a nice point to my string. Remember, it's an acrylic string, so it will burn and melt. So you have to be careful. I'm getting set up to add the slip knot. And I'm going to place the straw on top. And the new string way on the bottom, and I'm going to go around seven times. I like to use seven because it's a good biblical number, and it's the, um, I remind my students that it symbolizes the seven sacraments. So that's five, six, seven. Now the side I ended up with, I'm going to feed the string through. I don't want to get anything caught in there. That little cross will try to get caught. And now it's time to pull the slip knot. I want to keep it in order. And I'm going to grab with one plier and then another plier. And I'm going to pull it tight. So now the final step is to trim a quarter inch from that slip knot. And if you remember from the first video, I said it looked kind of like a little turtle head. 
and you want to burn that turtle head carefully and then push it towards the shell. And I like to just open it up a little bit to see if there's any hard edges. And if there are, you may have to just, there's a little hard edge right there. Melt it and round it off with your finger. Careful not to burn yourself. So this almost looks like a ring, but this will stretch out and fit over my hand without any problem. So when I'm getting ready to clean up, a little piece like this I would throw out, a little piece like this I would throw out, but if it's more than six inches, I would keep it because this would make um, a good slip knot and it would also, you'd probably make uh, the arms of the cross with this piece as well. And when I do uh, workshops at different parishes, um, I have the kids practice a knot I always come with a bracelet for them. Before they can pick a bracelet, they have to be able to make at least one knot. So I don't. I try not to waste, and um, I'll save this for either another bracelet or for practice for a, a student. I hope you have enjoyed this update to the video and found it helpful. Um, I want to thank you all for your comments, and I, I do try to answer them all. It's not my channel. It's not even Joe's channel. It's his brother John, uh, but I, I do check it out, and um, if you want to see it again, you know, watch the original video, and you can add comments here. Um, remember, uh, the rosary, the only more powerful prayer is the Mass itself. Say a rosary every day. Best way to become Catholic is to get to know Jesus. The best way to get to know Jesus is through the mysteries of the rosary. So say a rosary every day and um, make some bracelets. Thank you. <laughs>